Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing and renewing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your medication and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we want to hear from you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. Our number is 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the ones I take and the ones I recommend, the ones I've taken and recommended now for going close to 20 years. If you have questions about the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the Healthy Start Pack, the Beyond Osteo FX, the Ultimate Enzymes, the Glucogel Caps, the uh, Nightly Essence, Fucoid Z. Or if you have questions about the longevity business or a success story, or if you want to contribute to our conversation, 866-735, I'm sorry, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the products, you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, or you can head to my website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And if you want to purchase any of our skin health products, truth to treatment skin health products, including our retinol 5% gel, or our Omega-6 Healing Cream, or our Truth Serum or Truth Bomb. Go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We're talking about some of the underlying themes of degenerative disease, the degenerative disease process. It really is a process. Degeneration, degenerative meaning as in a verb, degenerating, should be called degenerating disease. Disease is a verb, by the way, not a noun. When we nominalize, when we make things into nouns, make things into things, we lock ourselves in. So it's really important to understand how we speak and the kind of words we use. The medical model, all, all power trips, whether it's a government power trip or whether it's a medical power trip or a political power trip or a legal power trip, all these 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 entities that would usurp our power as the individual manipulate language and words. And one of the ways they do it in medicine is by calling, by by naming things. That's why we have 12,000 different diseases. But they're all the same thing. They're just names. They're just descriptions. We've talked about this in the past. They're just Latin descriptions. They don't tell you anything about how to get better. There's a Latin description. And even more egregious, they're just there so we can be billed. So these, uh, so there could be terms for our decaying or deteriorating bodies. There can be numbers associated with them and go on a computer and we can be billed. So the underlying themes of the degenerative disease process, the first is the cell. The cell is the core of all health and wellness or lack thereof. It's the core of all illness. You don't hear about it because only we, through God and the divine force, can work at the level of a cell. You don't hear about it from your doctor. Doctors are not allowed in the cell, period. Medical models not allowed in the cell. They're not pure enough. The medical model is too evil to be welcomed into the holy sacred space of the cell. That's why the medical model cuts the cell out. That's why it radiates the cell. That's why it poisons the cell. Because it's not allowed in. Yeah, I know. You're not going to hear this from any. It's kind of subtle. I understand that. You're not going to hear this from your doctor. You're not going to hear from anybody. You're not going to hear from alternative. Uh, this distinction between the cell and the notion of the cell as only uh, as a place where only we can work. You're not going to hear about it from alternative practitioners either. 
You're not going to hear about it from most healthcare shows. They'll tell you about taking this vitamin for, the, for this illness and that vitamin for that illness, but nobody's talking about the breakdown at the level of the cell. You're only hearing it on this program. If we focus on the organs, the structures, the gallbladder, the skin, the heart, the liver, or perhaps uh, in the case of Alzheimer's disease, the brain, or Parkinson's disease, we're going to be confused, understandably so. It's not like we're stupid. It's, it's confusing. What do I do? How does my, I don't know what my gallbladder even does. How am I going to fix it? I, why, is my, why do I have Alzheimer's disease? I was just reading. Oh, my God, this got me so angry. Three separate tests are now out, or, or, or being researched anyway, for detecting Alzheimer's disease. One is an odor biomarker. This is from the Manel Center. One of the, uh, Manel Center is one of the places where the PhDs go to, uh, to figure out chemicals that will make us eat more food. The food, the food industry and the uh, pharmaceutical industry have set up this research center where they can understand the kind of chemicals uh, the, our brain, the human brain, responds to to get it to behave in certain ways, to get it to eat more food. The reason we can't eat Lay's potato, we can't only, can only eat one Lay's potato chip or can't only eat one Lay's potato chip is because there's chemicals in Lay's potato chips that were discovered at the Monell Center in Philadelphia, or outside of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. They put chemicals in their Lay's potato chips that the Monell Center has discovered will keep us eating. That's, that's what fast food is. That's what, that's what excitotoxins in food and, and food natural, quote, natural flavors in foods are. It's your chemicals that were discovered at the Manel Center in Pennsylvania where they learn and they study. Some of the best, most brilliant minds in the world study the kind of chemicals it takes to keep us eating the potato chips and the hamburgers and the food we would never touch under ordinary circumstances. But when we, they throw the chemicals in it, all of a sudden our brain goes yippee. Woo! That's why they call them excitotoxins. Our brain goes, whoa, whoopee, whoopee, spam, yummy. And you take that, the chemicals out, the Manel Center invented chemicals out, you wouldn't even smell the stuff anyway. So the Manel Center has come up with an odor biomarker for Alzheimer's disease. So now they're going to smell you to see if you have Alzheimer's disease. Of course, you're going to have to go to the doctor to do this. It's a special odor that only a special machine will be able to detect. Here's another one. A urine test to predict Alzheimer's disease. Now you can have a urine test. A saliva test. This is another one. A saliva test for Alzheimer's disease. Folks, it doesn't matter if you have Alzheimer's disease. That's just a name. That doesn't tell you anything. What matters is, am I forgetful? Am I confused? Do I not have the same mental clarity that I had? Who cares if it's Alzheimer's? Who cares if it's an amyloid plaque? Who cares if it's tau protein? It's all the same thing. It's inflammation. And you don't need a test. You don't need a test to somebody's... The, what do you think the purpose of the test is? It's so they can sell you a medicine or put you on an insurance plan or bill you extra for your insurance plan. It's not to make us better. That's not the purpose of diagnosis. It's not to make us better. It's to bill us. But it doesn't matter because we can do this ourselves. If we focus on the organs, we're not going to be able to. If we focus on the gallbladder, or the skin, or the heart, or the brain, we're not going to be able to. We're going to be, we're going to be so desperate and confused that we're going to be stuck to dealing with this feeble-minded medical model. We're going to be stuck with feeble-minded politicians saying things like, we're going to cure cancer. We're going to cure this thing just like we walked on the moon. We're going to have Joe Biden. He's going to cure cancer for us. He's going to lead this fight to cure cancer. That's what happens when you think that cancer is this entity that invades us from the outside. We're going to cure it. We're going to spend all the money we need to on medical research just like we walked on the moon. Oh, yeah. Really? You're going to spend all this money on medical research? Where's it going to come from? Oh, yeah, our taxes and fees and health care costs. If we focus, don't focus on the core, the, the cell where the disease begins, if we're focusing on the gallbladder and the skin and the brain, we're going to be dealing with feeble-minded doctors who will tell us there's no cure for your Alzheimer's disease. There's no cure. Oh, no, you can't cure it. We're just going to have to give you this, this uh, memantine, this nemanda for the rest of your life. Oh, there's no cure for your heart disease. No, we just got to put you on this stand drug. Rest your life. No cure for your thyroid disease. No, you're going to be on Synthroid the rest of your life. Is that going to help me, doctor? Well, no, not really. We don't think so, but uh, it's the best we can do. And it's because we're not focusing on the humble little cell and what's happening at the level of the cell when our, we have our degenerative disease. All right, we're coming back on the bright side right after this. Don't go away. Thank you 
for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. You can purchase all the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program at brightsideben.com. You can also go to benfuchsarchives.com or criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. You can also check out my skincare blog at truthtreatments.com. And uh, our number today, we do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. From the Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences, January 14th, 2016, it turns out that the higher your cholesterol or the more normal your cholesterol, the harder it is for drugs to work. So now they want to lower your cholesterol so your drugs work better. Why would it be that when your cholesterol levels are high or when your cholesterol levels are normal, when you have good cholesterol levels, healthy cholesterol levels, I should say, when you have healthy cholesterol levels, drugs don't work as well. Why would that be? Well, aside from the boneheaded idea that you need to lower cholesterol to make your drugs work better, I'm not kidding you. This is from the Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Cholesterol levels affect our body's capacity to receive medication. Cholesterol levels of a healthy person make it harder for the body to be tr- This is, I'm reading right here out of the article here. Quote, cholesterol levels of a healthy person make it harder for the body to be treated by a number of medicines, i.e. poisons. I'm saying that. That's not in the quote. So you can't poison yourself. You can't be poisoned if you've got normal cholesterol levels. Why? Because cholesterol is a detoxifier. Again, cholesterol is critically important for the body. This is, I mean, there are so many ways to say medical stupidity. I I don't even know where to begin, but poisoning your cholesterol levels is darn near the top of the list. Anyway, see, we don't understand the cells. It's the cell. The cell is a little animal, just like a dog or cat. If you have a pet, you can kind of relate to what it's like to have a cell. And if you abuse your pet, your pet's going to be sick. If we abuse the cell, we're going to be sick. Just like a dog, or a cat, or a monkey, or a cricket, or a bumblebee, or a cow, or a goat, or any other animal, cells need oxygen, they need food, and they need a clean place to do their business. And that's it. This is not rocket science. This is not something you need to go to school for eight years to understand. And most especially, it's not anything that we need to be intimidated about. Nutrients, the mighty 90, as Dr. Wallach calls them, the mighty 90 essential nutrients, These are cell food. This is the cell's version of a hamburger. The Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients are a cell's version of, not better not say hamburger, of broccoli, of good food, of quality food. The Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients are what a cell eats, and they're all important. There's 90 of them. There's 90 foods on the menu, on the cell menu. Vitamins, minerals, amino acids, essential fatty acids. And then it needs a clean place to do its work. And sugar represents dirt. If sugar represents dirt, you can begin to see why we got some problems here. Because look at all the sugar we're eating. Drugs represent dirt. Medicine that you get from your doctor puts a burden on the cell. I don't know what else we need to hear to put all the the entire drug company, pharmaceutical industry out of business. Or, you know, sometimes you need some drugs. I'm not Pollyannish about this. There's antibiotics and there's pain pills and perhaps chemotherapy occasionally, rarely. But uh, for the most part, drugs represent more burden on the cell. And then, of course, pollutants, air pollutants. And food counts as a pollutant, unfortunately. So if these little animals, these pets of ours, our cells, become defective, the first thing that happens is the body will build a wall around the cells, just like Donald Trump. It's going to build a wall. That's, uh, if you prefer, yesterday we called it deploying an airbag or a beaver's dam. That beaver's dam, that Donald Trump wall, we'll name it after Donald Trump, the Trump wall or the airbag is called inflammation. That's what inflammation is, and that's the second distinction that we need to address. The first is the cell, the next is inflammation. And then the third is kind of a blend of the cell and inflammation, and that's microinflammation, which is invisible, which you don't see. And that's the little, that's the problem right there, is the microinflammation is invisible, and it's happening at the level of a cell, so we don't see it. And the body is so gloriously redundant. It has so many, so many repeating redundant uh, components and cells that we don't notice one cell. We got a hundred trillion of them. 
The gallbladder may have a couple billion cells. So if you're missing one, if one is defective and it's surrounded with a beaver's dam, it's inflamed, we're not going to